from eating out of control, where food dominates you. Jesus said it this way, you will be overcome with surfeiting. Overeating will do you in. Now you got the church, folks that don't get bound by drugs. I'm not bound by alcohol. Oh no, I've been delivered from everything. And standing there, 350 pounds, singing in the choir. Thank you, you delivered. I've been, I, hey, look, I gave up cigarettes. Yeah, but you start eating instead. I gave, up every, I gave up everything for the Lord. But food. Move the plate away from him and watch him go crazy. We're going on a 40-day fast. Note how many people can't make it now. Whereas you used to be able to make it. But now, I ain't got to have some soda crackers. Son, you used to go on, on just water and juice. I know. I guess when you get older. No. <laughs> you don't turn back to something. You know, God would direct you how you fast. I'm not trying to, I don't, know, I don't even get into that. What I'm saying is, if the thing just dominates you, well, you can't fast anymore. You can't make it just a three-day little fast or something like that. Something is out of kilter. We got to begin to check what the problem is here. What has become your God? So the last one let out of that, that onslaught, the four horses of the apocalypse is Thanatos, the spirit of death, who we call the grim reaper. Four horsemen of the apocalypse. But where in the Bible are, is the revelation of the four horsemen given before this? And where are we seeing a scene established for this whole end time scenario? I can show you in the Bible where the whole end time scenario was forecast and prophesied as far back as 520 B.C. by a prophet of the Bible. Go back to Zechariah and you'll find the whole sequence played out. Go back to Zechariah and here's the meat of what we're talking about. The revelation of the apocalypse. Hidden away in the scripture and it can be revealed by the Holy Spirit. The stage is set first in Zechariah, and then the revelation of it all begins to unfold. Zechariah chapter 5, and he sets up the problem. And then from Zechariah chapter 6 going forward, he gives you the conflict to, to get rid of the problem. Zechariah is he's one book back from Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament. Go back one book from Malachi, you'll be looking at good old Zach, Zechariah chapter 5. He says, then I turned and, be, and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length, of, the length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, this is the curse. This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Now think about this. The whole earth is covered with a curse. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that swears shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that swears falsely by my name the false Christian, the pseudo-Christian, the cloaking Christian, the swearing, swearing falsely by my name. I'm coming to see him, he says, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth he said, moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. This is their, plural, resemblance through all the earth. It's an ephah, a basket. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. And this is a woman that sits in the midst of the ephah. A woman sitting down in the, in the basket, covered over with a lead lid. Impregnable. Superman can't even see through lead with x-ray vision. What's he saying? 
The vision is not manifested. If they want to shield you from x-rays when you go to the doctor, if they put lead in front of you, they can't take the x-ray. Even x-ray vision can't see this. He's trying to tell you. It's hidden. It's under the surface. You got to do what? Lift the lid of the ephah. Dear Prince, you should always say, but woe unto the man that lifts that lid. I say, lift the lid, man. Everybody afraid to lift the lid will never get out of this. Expose this trash for what it is. Lift the lid. We're in the process of lifting the lid of the ephah to expose behind the scenes, to revelate people as to what's been binding them. This is why we preached last week invisible chains. You're bound by and to something that you don't know what it is. We got to see the real deal now. And he said, this is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither, whither do these, these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, To build it a house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established. It shall be established and set there upon her own base. It shall be solidified. It'll be rock hard. It'll have a foundation established there and built on its own pedestal, or its own base. In the land of Shinar, the ancient name for the land of Babylon. Babylon. Can't you see the war is between the Babylonians and God? Can't you go back to Nimrod's day and see the Tower, Tower of Babel being built? This is where it is. This is the launching pad for Revelation. Babylon the Great is fallen, as fallen it says in Revelation. The whore of Babylon sits in the middle of the ephah. This is the thing that's against God. This is the very foundation and basis for the Antichrist system. Now, let's go forward. What establishes Babylon? How is it structured? Let me, let me detour over to this for a minute, what it does to a person. Babylon came into Israel in the person of whom? Who? How did Babylon infiltrate Israel, who brought it in and really made it rock solid? It began with Jeroboam. Remember the, the calves he put up in Bethel and in Dan? As it, as it migrated down through the, the king structure, the kingly structure of Israel, you saw a man that was born that really God just vented everything against this joker. Ahab. He married Jezebel, which means chaste and unmarried. That, that cannot be tamed. She would marry, you know, physically, but she wouldn't marry anybody. You know why? She was married to Baal. And she infiltrated Israel with worship of Baal and Ashtoreth. That's the thing we're up against right now. I was out the other day. And I was looking. I was driving through a, uh, a strip mall about, you know, late at night. And all of a sudden, I drove around the corner, and 400 or so black homosexuals was in the parking lot all around their cars, hugged up together, all over each other. They were letting out of some kind of a club when they had had uh, female impersonators entertaining them all night. But the parking lot was full. There might have been three or 400 cars out there. And they were just out there like just animals in the parking lot. This is because of this woman sitting in this ephah with a lead cover over her 
sat in on a, a set on a pedestal in Babylon and lifted up. You say, how do you get these homosexuals correlating with that, that woman? Because this is what this system makes. Sodomites. The Bible calls them whores. She's a mother of harlots and abominations. Harlots are evident, whorish women, and abominations are the homosexuals. The Bible says if you lie with a man like you lie with a woman, it is an abomination. What does she use to defi defile everybody? What does she divine on people? She uses witchcraft to get a person anchored to Babylon and then to conform you to Babylon and make you a pervert. Pervert it perverts you. What is the very essence of it? Why is it a perverter? Because it's a woman sitting in the ether. That's what does it. It's matriarchal headship that's doing it. You can form a man to female leadership and headship. He's going to become effeminate. These young black boys are nothing more than a result of a fatherless home where the black man has been removed from the home with no patriarchal authority, no imagery of a man. They have been made matriarchal, they've been matronized, and they're effeminate. Now they hug up with each other with affection for another man because of this matriarchal system at work. The women that come out of a, out of a matronized system, they come out authoritative and masculine like their mama was. As you war inside not to become a homosexual, these two entities couple off together. An effeminized man and an authoritative masculine woman. You got the beautiful girls out there that walk around as whores, which makes them masculine. They are the aggressors. They are the one that's coming after the weak, dried up, effeminate boys. And it's physically seen now. All these homosexuals had a common trait. They were skinny as rails. They looked like little dried up, emaciated stick men. Everything dried up. All of them, to a man, had their pants pulled down and it cupped the bottom of their butts. The pants were pulled down in the belt loop. The belt actually cups the butt and pulls tights around the butt and buckles in front about right at their growing. But they make sure the pants drop below the butt and cup it and forms a perfect little cup around their butts if they wear the, uh, the underwear they wear. And some of them have on it's not just uh, uh, underwear that's loose-fitting. Some of them have on bikini drawers with their butts cupped by their pants. Now, this is an ugly sight now. And then you marry that, then I'm having on skinny jeans. And you're wondering, what's going on? Little T-shirts and little caps backwards a lot of times. Two earrings on. Eyebrows arched, and sometimes they splice their eyebrows in between the, the eyebrow to splice it up. Tattoos, nail polish, they're cutinizing themselves. They're cute little boys. And you'll find women walking around with these jokers who are headed toward becoming a homosexual. They, they just hadn't fulfilled the whole process yet. But the girls who are masculine like these guys. So you see the big, robust, healthy girl walking around, seven-inch heels now. That's the pedestal now this thing sits on. The, fit, the female form is sitting up on stiletto heels now. You can't see this everywhere. Micro mini dresses on so short, just, just like those pants cup the butt of the boy, that those skirts just barely cup their butts. They're so short. With all their cleavage out, and walking around, tattooed, pierced, crazy.